Welcome. Today we are going to talk about TVs. I get a lot of questions regarding what kind of TV to get, what's a smart TV, what kind of resolution, um, Amazon, Netflix, Apple TV. So I thought we would break down this seminar into several parts. The first part is TV talk, where I share with you important terms that you should know. I'll also talk about your choices of TVs that are out there for you today. Another important topic is TV resolution. And probably the biggest thing I get questions on are all the different choices out there. Apple TV versus Netflix versus Chromecast versus Roku and cable and so on. And then lastly, we'll talk about the importance of net neutrality. All right, so let's get right into it with some terms that you should know. The number one question I get when it comes to anything dealing with television or video is what is streaming? Streaming is a method of transmitting or receiving data in real time, especially video and audio material over the internet as a steady continuous flow, allowing playback to proceed while subsequent data is being received. What does that mean? It means delivering data from the company's computer to your computer through the internet as a constant stream of data. Think of it like a river or a creek that has a constant flow of water. It's the same concept here, except instead of water, it's data. So you must have a continuous connection to the internet in order for this data to be flowed to your computer. The speed of your internet connection the strength of your Wi-Fi signal, the computer processor, all of this has a role in the streaming process. If one of these is slow, it's going to slow down the process of that data being flowed from the company's computers to your computer or your television at home. I think the perfect example of streaming, and it's something that we've all done, is YouTube. YouTube is the world's largest video streaming website and service out there. There's Netflix, there's Prime Video, there's Hulu, there are hundreds, there are thousands of different video streaming services out there. But we've all watched a video on YouTube at some point. When you go to YouTube and you click on a video or let's say you want to search for a particular video, you've got a search bar right up here. When you click on a video, that is a form of streaming. So let me just randomly pick one here. So let's go to this little cute video. When I click on that video and that video starts to play, I am streaming. It's a connection from YouTube's computers to my computer here at home. I have a constant stream, a constant flow of data that allows me to watch this video. This is streaming. Buffering. In streaming audio or video from the internet, buffering refers to downloading a certain amount of data before you can start to play that audio or that video. We've all experienced this kind of circle that goes around while we're waiting and waiting and waiting for content to be loaded. That is buffering. We've all experienced this watching the nightly news where there's a correspondent in a different country and sometimes there is a stopping and starting of the video that we're watching. Downloading. Unlike streaming, Downloading is the process in which the end user obtains the entire digital file for the content before watching or listening to it. So streaming 
requires that you have a constant connection to the internet while you watch that video. With downloading, you're actually taking the file, that video file, that audio file, and actually making a copy of it on your computer or on your television. That allows you to watch the content at any time without the need of internet connection. After downloading the file, the file is physically stored on the user's device and the user can watch, listen, or use the file without the need of an internet connection. That file is downloaded onto your computer in your downloads folder. Apps. The most popular definition of an app is software that typically runs on a smartphone, most commonly iPhone, iPad, Androids, but more recently on smart TVs. The term app simply means software application. You purchase an app using the App Store if you're on an Apple device or if you're on an Android device you would download and purchase apps from the Google Play app. The chances are you've been using apps for years. Your home or work computer has apps like a spreadsheet program, calculator, or photo editor. Recently these apps or applications evolved in a big way. Let's start with platforms. You know, a place to put things. A table, in a basic sense, is a platform. You plug in some plates, cups, and flatware, and it turns into a great place to eat. Computers work the same way. They create platforms for software applications. A spreadsheet and an accounting app can turn a computer into a business tool. Music and video apps can make a computer a studio. For most of their history, Apps have seemed big and expensive. We often bought them at a store and loaded them onto a computer with a disk. And most of these apps didn't connect to the internet. Recently, platforms changed in big ways. Our mobile phones and tablets became useful platforms just like our computers, and this enabled a different kind of app. Instead of big, expensive programs, many apps became smaller and cheaper. Instead of coming in a box or taking hours to download, they could be purchased or downloaded for free from the internet with a click, even on the go. This made apps collectible. For little investment, we could collect apps on our devices that reflect our needs and interests. One person's collection may focus on gaming, another business, or both. Now apps may wake you up in the morning, give you a snapshot of the news, play the music you like, help you get to the airport, check you in, and help you read your new book all from the palm of your hand. To support all these new apps, we need online marketplaces that make them easy to purchase and download. This way, small teams and large organizations have a way to market, give away, or sell thousands of new apps. And these new apps have another advantage. Many are built to work with the internet. This means they can back up your work, play your music, or connect you with friends wherever you are without opening a web browser. But it's not just phones and tablets. Computers, browsers, social networks, and gaming systems have all become platforms for a new generation of apps. So apps aren't really new. What have changed are platforms and marketplaces that make them easy to purchase and collect for whatever you need to do. Smart TVs many times have apps built into them. But what is a smart TV? A smart TV uses either a wired Ethernet connection or many have built-in Wi-Fi to connect directly to the Internet in your home, whereas a normal TV cannot do that. Most models today have built-in Wi-Fi, but before you purchase a smart TV, you want to check. Smart TVs may also have the ability to run apps that come built in with the TV. So your smart TV is connected to the internet. And that device has apps already built in. A lot of the popular ones, Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Amazon Prime. 
If you don't have a particular app on your TV, you can always do a search and download more apps on your TV. Binge watching. The practice of watching multiple episodes of a television program in rapid succession. This is very, very popular. Um, I've just kind of recently got into binge watching certain television programs. One of my favorites is Portlandia. And this map here of the U.S. Uh, kind of shows by state what are the most popular programs to binge watch. HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. HDMI is a digital interface for transmitting audio and video data in a single cable. In the past, we had to use two different cables, an audio and a video. Now with HDMI, that's all built in within one cable. This is what an HDMI cable looks like. Depending on the age of your TV and the devices that you want to plug in, chances are you will need an HDMI cable to do that.